I pulled out lipstick for this. Home quarantine. And I'm still wearing lipstick. <laughs> it's a good day. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Diaries of DIY Danny. This is a place where I share my love of DIY and help solve your home decor dilemmas with a custom DIY solution. This is a very unusual time for us all worldwide. I just hope that you're all staying home, you're staying healthy, and ultimately just staying positive. I think right now it's very easy to focus on the negative, obviously for good reason, but mental health is important too, and with everybody quarantined inside, we're all cooped up, we're getting stir crazy, so we need to stay active and stay positive, and we're gonna do it with some DIY. <laughs> If you guys follow me over on Instagram, then you know I started a DIY home challenge. This was my challenge to you all to come up with DIY solutions in your home using materials you already had lying around. This could be anything. I obviously have a lot of excess wood. And today I built a box. And I know, before you say, okay, Danny built a box. This box has adjustable shelves. I have already seen so many brilliant DIY projects come forward. But if you haven't done so yet, make sure you share it with me on social media and use the hashtag DIY Home Challenge. Let's all DIY and stay positive together. Last and most importantly, I am doing a DIY giveaway. We're all in self-isolation, we're not going anywhere, and some of you might not have all the DIY items that you wish you had to help transform a couple pieces and keep you busy. So I am going to send it to you. I teamed up with my wonderful friends at Colmana Designs here in Toronto, and we're gonna be giving away a fun Annie Sloan starter kit. It is a mini project pack. It comes with three colors that I personally picked out a clear wax and a brush. Not only that, you get this amazing colorist book. The inspiration in this book is amazing. Man, I should have bought one of these for myself. <laughs> to enter, you need to be a resident of Canada or the US. Head over to Instagram and be following me at DIY Danny and Colmana Designs and simply share me a photo of a piece of furniture item that you want to transform in your home. All of the information is in the description box below. Go check it out. Show me what you want to paint because this project pack could be yours. <laughs> it's so cool. Okay, enough gabbing. Without further ado, let's jump into my DIY home challenge. Roll the tape. Boop, boop. There's one space in my home that I have avoided tackling. So I'm in my bedroom. You guys have probably seen my bedroom before. I outlined this in my 2019 home tour. I will link it here. My place of focus for my DIY home challenge was my bedroom. A couple things have changed in this room, primarily just the amount of plaid shirts I probably own. I put Doggo's bed in the corner here. It just keeps growing. I guess the other big change is this amazing thrifted find. Um, guys, can we just talk about this mirror? 1999. How beautiful is this little antique mirror? I love my bedroom so, so much, but there's one particular wall that became a tad neglected over time. This is where we need to fix. It's kind of like the wall that all things go to die right now. I love this dinosaur print, but um, I haven't been able to figure out where it's gonna go. I found this at a vintage market and now it's hanging on the same, don't know where to go nail. As you can see, this wall is um, set. I'm embarrassed that this wall exists, I'm not gonna lie. I climb into bed every night and all I think is, I gotta do something about that damn wall. So, under the circumstances, I decided that it is finally time to tackle this damn wall. So, here was my plan. <laughs> First, I was going to push my bed bench to that wall. Honestly, I do this all the time anyways because the dog feels like it's a personal step ladder onto the bed, so that needs to change. Second, I'll be creating three DIY photo shelves using wood I have lying around the house that I will center onto the wall. As a last fun DIY, I'll take pre-existing artwork I have in the home, plus create some new art pieces to bring these photo shelves all together. So first step, and probably the most important step for, well, 
any DIY project, I've got to measure that wall. Probably go about here-ish. Second one here, and third one around there. I swear, if you go into any DIY without measuring your space, it is destined to fail. Destined to fail. So, always measure the space first. I'm using my finger. Create stuff. Okay, well then four feet it is. Four feet, Bob. Well, off to the workshop we go. Yes, I know, it's the garage. Now, what I've started to do is pull all of the wood that I currently think I can use to build the photo shelves. I have some of this. This was decorative baseboard or trim. I have a bunch of these. These are one by threes. I think I have two of these. This is a one by four. And I had some off cuts from another project. And then I had these tiny little guys. One, two, three, four of these tiny little guys. And then I have this giant board here. So, in terms of wood that I own, I think this is all I can use. Now, building photo ledges isn't obviously complicated. It's basically just three pieces of wood that you put together. I'm gonna use this big guy to cut my back pieces, which are going to be three and three quarters. Then the bottom is going to be two inches, and then the front, I'm not sure yet, because in my mind I was gonna use this, but I'm not sure. So. First off is let's get this measured out, let's cut it. Today I get to use a very fancy tool that I've been waiting to use, so this is exciting. I was pretty excited because I recently bought a Craig Rip Cut Circular Saw Edge Guide. That's a mouthful. This is a device made by Craig and essentially it allows you to hook up your circular saw uh, onto it and it helps you make straight cuts along big boards. I'm gonna give it a go! Why the heck not? How you do things? Uh, a fun, quick hack that I always do is hold my mitts up to the heater and then I put them on so my hands are nice and toasty. It can get pretty cold in Canada from time to time, so you kind of have to find hacks to get by when you're working in a cold garage. One day, Danny, you will have a workshop. One day. <laughs> quick, so I don't lose the heat. Toast! Hands, toast hands. Best hack I know. All right, back in business. First up, I had to measure out my three and three quarter pieces on my plywood board. For this project, I was setting up a mini rig on top of my work table, which is some cut two by six boards that I just drill into place. This way I can place my board on top and run my circular saw right across. Now I've seen some awesome DIYers use cheap foam board, which you could just place right under your board and your circular saw runs right through it. But I didn't have that. So I was just making my situation work. Okay, piece one. Yay, three boards, cut. So once I had my three three and three quarter pieces cut, it was time to move on to my three two inch pieces, which were gonna be the bottom of my photo shelf. Bottom of the day, let's cut some wood. To cut the two inch pieces, I felt it was a lot safer to do it on a table saw. So I pulled that baby out and ripped them off quick and snappy. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so check it out. So this is what those photo shells were looking like and I was feeling a bit wishy-washy about them. I kind of think that the back piece is too high. Like I could have cut this in half. I'm kind of worried about it. <laughs> Which really sucks. I probably should have done this evaluation before I put away all the tools. Maybe it just, that's the look. It just has like a bigger back side to it. See, that to me looks weird too. So I cut it. Ah! I took off three quarters of an inch just off the top. That's just so much better. I'm glad I just took the time and did it right. Now all I had to do was sand these boards down and I was ready to put these photo shelves together. To sand these boards, I was using a 120 grit on my orbital sander to get things done quickly then went to a 220 grit by hand just to bring it down to a nice smooth finish. To secure my photo shelves together, I was simply clamping the three inch back to the two inch bottom. I pre-drilled my holes through the back, countersunk those holes to create a nice space for my screw to lie flat and screwed them together using one and a half inch wood screw. 
As for that quarter inch oak hobby board in the front, I simply clamped it in place and used my brad nailer with a one inch brad nail to hold it all in place. Then all I did was measure, pre-drill, and countersink three holes that would help me secure these bad boys to the wall. Not too bad. No, I'm not gonna lie, plywood probably would not have been my first choice of wood, but did I make it work? Oh yes, I made that work. I filled in all of the holes with wood fill and I sanded this down. I'm feeling really good about it. I think uh, they are officially ready to start getting stained. Then using an old favorite, I stained the shelves with a Ferrothane special walnut. I know I'm a broken record, but it's so good and the color never fails me. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, sitting there, they didn't look like much, but those quarter inch oak fronts looked so rich stained. All the wood grains that came through, mwah, gorgeous. Gorgeous, I tell you. That plywood almost did it a disservice, but you know, you just put your shiny star in the front and hopefully it all works out. <laughs> Good morning, all. It is the next day. The photo, like, must you right now? Good Lord. And uh, the photo rails are done, but now I kind of need to like corral together a bunch of artwork that I currently have in my home and then decide what I need to make. So I have an entire bed of stuff right here that I found just kicking and things that I think that'll work. Yeah, so as a DIY hoarder, I tend to accumulate a lot of artwork, random frames and photos. So I kind of amalgamated it all into one place just to see what I had to work with. Good Lord, I had embroidered hoops, fun decorative cards, typography pieces, old thrifted frames, decorative paper, coloring books, old illustration prints, old abstract art, sketchbooks, failed DIYs, geeky records, you name it. I think I'm definitely going for an eclectic look. That is for sure. But at the end of it all, there's one thing you need to keep in mind when you're planning a gallery or photo wall, and that's to pick a theme. That could be in the use of color, you could go monochromatic within the frames itself or with the photos. You could use a whole mix of frames, but they're all the same size, or maybe there's a mix of two color tones in the frames, or you simply just use the same type of frames. If you get all sporadic, it can kind of start to look like a chaotic mess, so pick your theme and stay within it. If you're stuck, a good tip is to find a favorite photo and use the colors in that as your guide to create your theme. Like this one, for example. This photo from Minted is something I love so much. All the colors in this are amazing and was definitely my inspiration for what I wanted to play within for my photo shelf. I love the pinks, the dark green, and all the nudes. For me, I love an eclectic look, but I wanted to keep things feeling natural with a lot of earthy tones. So let's start DIY and some art. To start with my natural look, my first art piece was using old web caning I had left over from my arch cabinet DIY. My idea was to create a fun moon shape painted onto the cane webbing and frame it like a piece of art. To do this, I simply used the glass front from the frame to trace out the size I needed on my web caning and then just cut it out with my rotary cutter. I wasn't feeling very confident about freehanding my moon right onto the cane webbing, so I created a stencil by drawing it out in my sketchbook first. From there, I just cut it out and traced it onto the webbing. To go with my natural theme, I painted my moon with a lovely dark green acrylic paint. I believe this was called Deep Green. When it comes to painting on cane webbing, I've done it enough times to know that I don't like painting within a stencil. It always bleeds under the line, so painting in a line was the best method for me. It's the way I like to do it. If you feel better using stencils, go for it. But I don't have any luck, so I just don't do it. And voila, a framed DIY cane webbing art piece. When I framed it, I actually ended up keeping the back piece off of it so that it was just the glass in behind the cane webbing. I liked this so much more. I like kind of seeing through it, but if you wanna just put a back on it and make it look like it's framed, up to you. I'm just saying I thought it looked really dope if you could see through it. Really add something to it, you know? 
Okay, moving on to my second DIY art piece. I actually decided to have fun with how one of my typographic pieces was framed. Keeping things natural, I wanted to use raw wood, so I was gonna create a DIY clipboard to display my artwork. To make this, I had a quarter inch plywood board in my wood stash, so I simply measured out my frame size and using a sharp blade and a straight edge, I scored the wood a couple times and snapped the wood. I then simply sanded and rounded out my edges to give it a nice clean look. I had a bunch of these chunky wood clips handy, which I simply love. So using a glue gun, I glued these straight onto the board and voila, a DIY clipboard frame. Then last second, I decided I kind of wanted to give it a pop of color. So I thought how cute would it be to paint the clips peach? Not cute. I mixed my yellow, my red, and my white. I created the peach paint, I painted it, and then hated it. Oh my God, it was just the wrong color. What a poor choice. <laughs> so I just went safe and painted it black. I love me some black. Very indecisive on this project, guys. I can't help it. Sometimes I don't know what I want, but I do get there. I love this DIY clipboard frame because of just how versatile it is. I like that you can do fun designs on it, not to mention you can make the clips whatever look and style and size you want, and it allows you to change the artwork on it whenever you want. You can change it seasonally, daily, you could put personal artwork, typographic, bought artwork. You can go to my Society6 page and buy some of my artwork, please. <laughs> That would look really great there. <laughs> kidding, but not kidding. Please buy my artwork. <laughs> so as my last piece of DIY art, I had this lovely gold thrifted frame I needed to fill. Again, going with my natural theme, I wanted to bring a little plant life into this scene. So I decided to watercolor a eucalyptus branch. I've seen a few versions of these on Pinterest and I just love them. So I decided to give it a go. And I gotta say, I must've been feeling real courageous that day because I just went into that blind. I didn't sketch anything. I didn't put anything on pencil first. I just went right in with the paint. And I never do that. I don't know what I was feeling that day, but I think courageous was the word. <laughs> My goodness. But I gotta say, I had a lot of fun with this. Watercolor is tricky and I'm still perfecting it, but it's a lot of fun to play with. If you guys are ever looking for great watercolor tutorials, go check out Shada Campbell. She is this amazingly talented creator from Charlottetown PEI. She does the best watercolor tutorials and her stuff is just gorgeous. Her videos are so meditative and so easy to follow, so go check it out. When I was finally happy with my painting, I simply trimmed it to size and it was ready to be framed. It was time to hang those shelves. And this was pretty simple. I simply marked, leveled, put in some anchors, and screwed them in. I think I ended up giving each shelf a distance of a foot and a quarter between each other, but I mean, I would just eyeball this for your space if you ever do one. Shelves! High five! And now, the part we've all been waiting for, let's style those shelves. I gotta say, I had a lot of fun putting this shelf together. I tried to put something natural on each shelf, but I think sticking to my theme really ensured this all came together nicely. One thing I made sure was that everything had a little bit of breath, giving each piece a little space, that way nothing on the shelf felt too crammed. Beyond my DIY art, I pulled in some of my favorite DIY and decor books, magazines, and a few cute personality pieces like a plant and some decorative elements. To give it a bit of whimsy, I finished it off by adding these adorable fairy lights. I finally had a beautiful view from my bed. What I love about these shelves is just how versatile they are. Not only are they great to display photos, but they're great for creating a mini library for all your favorite books and magazines, collectibles, music, whatever. 
With the photo shelves there, I even got inspired to bring back my favorite reading chair into the corner. It just felt so complete and so cozy in there and it was just nice to have a little reading nook beside it. Don't worry, Doggo's bed went right beside me and he's very happy about it. <laughs> what are you doing? What? Just don't look at me like that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed my DIY home challenge project. There are a lot more DIYs coming your way that I'm creating out of my home with my challenge. So make sure you're subscribed and don't forget about my giveaway. Make sure you head over to my Instagram. Make sure you're following. Follow Comana Designs and let me know why you want to receive this mini project pack. What piece of furniture do you want to make over? Stay positive, keep DIYing, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.